An example of an appealing proportion is the ratio found in the golden section, which is a point we're going to reach later in this lecture. <laughs> the inference is that if you make something that adheres to these values, then beauty can reliably be achieved. But the notion of objective beauty was discredited during the 18th century. The philosopher Edmund Burke formulated the following example to make the point. A swan has a very long neck. A medium-sized body. And a tiny tail. Burke asks, is this a beautiful proportion? It must be, because everyone thinks that swans are beautiful. But this is rather confusing, as everyone also thinks peacocks are beautiful. And peacocks have got a pretty short neck, an average sized body, and a tail that's longer than the neck and body combined. So let's now return to a state of pure repetition. Huron proposes that after a number of repetitions, listeners will habituate and in turn responsiveness and pleasure will decline. On the face of it, that seems pretty reasonable. But let's now consider this statement. Excessive repetition is an invitation to listen in. A purely repetitive work may lead listeners to a state of disinterestedness. But we can also imagine a listener who becomes highly interested. Highly interested in the way that the music resonates in the space that's being performed. Highly interested in the small details of the musical idea that you might have missed the first ten times, including incidental sounds like the sound of the guitarist's hand moving up and down the neck. This person might also tune into non-sonic aspects, such as studying the way that the musicians communicate with one another. To explore this, we're now going to consider three hypothetical individuals. My hypothetical name is Julia. I quite like the melody in that piece. But for me, the inclusion of heavy metal was an immediate turn-off. I think heavy metal is too loud, too aggressive, and I associate it with satanic worship. <laughs> I feel negatively about satanic worship. <laughs> My hypothetical name is Roger. I've made a firm and exclusive commitment to blues music. I believe blues is the highest form of music because it's improvised, expressive, and deals with personal woes in a harsh world. The idea of an instrumental piece reconciling two unrelated styles sounds bad to me. It has no lyrics and sounds like an academic exercise. I believe music should be concerned with the expression of feelings. Most of Roger's friends are also blues enthusiasts and their sense of self-identity is through the group. According to Henry Tushville's social identity theory, Roger's group is discriminating against other groups to enhance their own group's sense of self-worth and status. <laughs> Through a process of social categorization, or in this case, aesthetic categorization, they're dividing the world into us and them. We all do it. My hypothetical name is Sebastian. I don't like the idea of that piece because I believe in stylistic purity. I will concede, however, that the whole idea of mixing styles was historically important in the heyday of modernism, postmodernism perhaps, but ultimately it was a dead end. 
And anyway, it's just dated today.